was buried beneath my shame. Who could carry that kind of weight? It was my turn till I met you.
Love 
Man, I'm so happy to see you guys today. Hey everyone, how are you doing? It's Pastor JT. Um, we are so glad that you chose to join us today. Um, we're just going to speak to you for a little bit on what God has given me this week. Um, you could have been doing a lot of other things this, this Saturday or Sunday whenever you're watching. Um, and we are so glad that you chose to spend your time with us and that is awesome. Just a little update on the church. We are moving forward and have a ton done, um, getting a ton done this weekend actually. We are planning to get up and functioning ASAP. We are hoping for the end of the month. Um, we have contractors in here again next week um, doing sprinklers and electric and all kinds of other stuff. I, I'm getting super excited to get back in the house and worship with all of you again. Also, if you're a volunteer and you've taken the volunteer training and you haven't signed up yet for text giving we want, or text messaging, we want you to do that. Um, if you text the word volunteer to 681-202-2364, you can receive text updates on what's going on in the volunteer world and we'll keep you updated on what's happening in the church. Also, if you're new with us today, you can also text the word new to that same number, 681-202-2364. We would love to get to know you and keep up to date with you on what's going on and what's happening in the church. So, so last week we talked about Job and, and how his life was crazy at times and how he suffered greatly in his life, but, but we also talked about how Job decided to to change his perspective and, and flip his focus a little bit and focus on something else that was more positive um, and what God has done had done in his life. And we also talked about how sometimes in our suffering we see confinement, but God sees refinement. How a lot of times we see confinement, we we seem alone, we we feel like we're all in this world by ourselves, but, but God is using it as a refining fire to refine us and encourage us in our walk with him. I, I encouraged you last week to blow up your social media feeds with everything positive, no negative going on. You all tagged us and man, it was encouraging. You guys blew it up. It was, it was so refreshing in a, in a time where there was so much negative going on, especially in this political season to see a church body gathering around under one mission and that was not to encourage others and that is an awesome vision we are so glad you guys took a part of that last week so so this week we want to look at hebrews 12. so if you have your bibles or your glowing bibles today turn with me to hebrews 12 and we'll get started if you're watching this on your glowing bibles um, today, um, no worries, we will have the scriptures on the screen right here somewhere uh, for you to read. Hebrews 12, 1 through 3 is where we want to start today, and I'll be reading it out of the NIV today. It says, Therefore, since we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses, let us throw off everything that hinders and the sin that so easily entangles. And let us run with perseverance the race marked out for us. Fixing our eyes on Jesus, the, the pioneer and the perfecter of faith. For the joy set before him, he endures the cross. Scorning its shame and sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. Consider him who endured such opposition from sinners. So that you will not grow weary and lose heart. Now we want to jump ahead to verses 28 and 29 in the same chapter. It says, Therefore, since you are receiving a kingdom and cannot be shaken, let us be thankful and so worship God acceptably with reverence and awe. For our God is in a consuming fire. Let us pray today. Lord, thank you for this day. I thank you for everything that you're doing in our midst, in our church. Um, I thank you for last week. Um, the encouragement that I got from seeing everybody posting positive things on, on Facebook and Insta and Twitter. Lord, we, we love you today. Lord, I ask you to speak through me. Um, give me the words that would speak to your people. Um, Lord, help us as we continue on this work of the church. Lord, help us that we can get open as soon as possible so that we can get back in here and worship with our friends and our family. 
Lord, we, we love you and we can't thank you enough for everything that you're doing. And it's in your holy and mighty name that we pray. And amen. Amen. I, I want to kind of walk through the scriptures today, something that I don't normally do, um, and talk to you for just a few minutes around the subject of confidence, having confidence in Jesus Christ and walking tall with your head held high um, because you know that he's got it in control. Um, we all get weary sometimes, right? I know for sure I've been weary a couple times in the last couple months um, with this building project. And surely I can get a couple of you homeschooling parents right now to give me an amen, right? Um, I'm, sure, I'm sure you can. It's, it's true though. Even the strongest Christians grow weary and unsettled in their faith sometimes. Things get a little uncomfortable and they, they get weird from time to time. We, we, we hear you. We understand what's going on. Let, let's look for just a minute at the first two scriptures of Hebrew 12. It says, let us throw off everything that hinders and the sin that so easily entangles us. And let us run with perseverance the race that's marked out for us, fixing our eyes on, on Jesus the pioneer and the perfecter of faith. For the joy set before him, he endured the cross, scorning its shame and sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. A, a ton of times in, in our lives, when, when in my life personally, when I have grown weary in the faith, it, it was because I either let something, interfe something else interfere in my relationship with God, or I picked up a hurt habit or hang up that separated me from him. We, we have to search ourselves and, and once we recognize what's separating us from him, we have to throw off all these, all these things, the sin, the, the crazy stuff that's in our lives that we've built up around us. A lot of the times I know for myself, it, it's been me who, who has pulled away from God because of the sin or because of the addiction that I got in my life. We have to throw off all those things and dive deep into him so that we don't get tangled up in the mess that we sometimes create as humans. Other times in my life, I have, I've let depression or worry or, or wandering in my mind or circumstances to distract me from the race that I was supposed to be running. There, there have been many distractions and things that the, the devil has thrown my way to get me off course. I've had to turn around and refocus my eyes on him and continue to tell myself that I have a mission and to keep trucking. Many, many marathon runners and people who do long distance running know what it means to, to hit a wall. I mean, I don't know what it means to hit a wall because I don't exercise, I don't run. But there's a lot of long distance guys that, that do. In one minute, they're running with sustained speed and energy. In the next, they, they feel immense fatigue and have to stop or maybe even drop out of the race entirely. Researchers have discovered that the brain starts to, starts to dip in dopamine at certain points of the race and there is a literal dip in motivation. Many athletes have implemented a spectator strategy to, to kind of keep themselves from having this problem where they position friends and family members at, at specific mile markers in the race to, to help encourage them and to cheer them on. Instead of hearing, I can't do it in their minds, they hear, you can do it, you've got this, you, we love you from the fans. Hearing the cheers and encouragement counteracts the dopamine dip and lifts the athlete's spirits, pushing them forward with more vigor than before. Well, we, including myself, 
have to learn to fix our focus in order to live lives of contentment. To be able to walk around with our heads held high, to, to walk around with God confidence. When, when our focus be, begins to shift to us, that's when the problems start in our lives. We, we will always grow weary and tired because we turn to our depression, our, our anxiety. We turn to that, that addiction, that thing that's caught us up and entangled us and instead of focusing on the Lord. It, it says in verse 3, Consider him who endured such opposition from sinners. There, he's talking about Jesus here. Consider him with a capital M. So that, so that you will not grow weary and lose heart. It just gave us the antidote to, to fix the problems that we find ourselves in when we get entangled in these, these messes that we create. We, we must learn in hard times to fix our focus and look to Him in order not to grow weary. This protects us from from turning to the things that can't satisfy us at all. We, we've talked about it in other weeks. We, we have a tendency to look for satisfa satisfaction, if I could say the word right. We, we look at other things to satisfy us, like our addictions, like our husband and wives. It doesn't, they can't fully satisfy us. They will let you down. Your friends, your family, you turn to, turn to the bottle. You turn to a prescription or maybe not even a prescription drug. We, we all have this tendency to, to turn to things that, that we think can satisfy us but never can. We have to fix our focus and, and focus back on to God and get ourselves aligned so that we don't fall into this trap and this snare that will con completely consume our lives. What you have to understand is today that I want to give you a little bit of encouragement today. That the thing that you need to understand is you have the keys to the kingdom. You are a child of God. In verse 28, it tells us that because we're a child of God and because we have inherited this kingdom, we cannot be shaken. We could, we could stand tall in whatever trial that we're facing. Anything that's going on in our lives, we can, we can walk through it with our head held high and in confidence that God is going to take care of each and every issue that we face. And I know it, it, it's, I make it sound like it's easy. I, it's, it's easy to say, but it's sometimes harder to do. But we have to learn to fix our focus on Him if we want to get through the trials and the tribulations that this life seems to throw at us, especially this year. In, in verse 28, it says, Therefore, since we are receiving a kingdom that cannot be shaken. It, it also tells us that, that since we are inheriting this kingdom, that in all this stuff we are dealing with, that we should praise Him. We must learn to to turn our pain into praise. In verse 28b, it says, let us be thankful and so worship God acceptably with reverence and awe. Turning our pain into praise and thankfulness combats the weariness in our spiritual lives. We, we have found ourselves very weary through this building project and I, ha I have to admit it. There have been other things that have come up and that I really wanted to just throw my hands up and just be done. It's easy to fall into that trap in our lives. I myself have been there several times throughout this thing. As I said at the beginning of the discussion, there was I had to go back and I had to focus in again on him because I was getting distracted by all the things that were going on around me. There, there were so many different fires to put out. There was, there were so many different things going on in the church that, that I had to stop for a minute and say, listen, that is not the focus 
what what is the focus there was several times that i went home to to christina after working at the at the church and maybe i've got a call or or something going on in the church and i just looked at her and i said why in the world why in the world did i get myself into this but at the end of the day when I fixed my focus, instead of focusing on me and having a pity party for me, saying, oh, woe is JT, why in the world am I in this situation, or, or why did I do this, God brings me back to, are you, are you focusing on, on these problems or, or this, or, or are you focused on me? Are you going to run the race that I've put in your path, or are you going to to, to look at all these other things and let it distract you to the point to where you almost give up or, or are you going to focus on me and let me handle it and help, and help you run the race that I have set in place for you? I had to get my focus right. In these times, we all have to get our focus right. Back to him and the mission that he has put us on and not let the distractions that I'm telling you right now that the devil wants you to fall into. The devil wants nothing more than to distract you from what God has called you to do. There is, there is another verse in the, in the Bible that I want to share with you today. It was my dad's uh, favorite verse in the Bible and, and has now turned into my favorite favorite life verse, the, the thing that gets me through. And mat, matter of fact, when I'm sitting in my new office, as you can see, that hasn't been finished behind me and screws are still showing and everything else. But, but on, on my wall behind me, I have an idea of putting this, this scripture on my wall because it's one of the things that, that I want to remind me in times like the ones that we've been talking about today of why I do this. You see, when I was feeling like I was down and I was out, and I just wanted to pretty much throw my hands up and, and just say, you know what, I, I'm good. I, I don't want to do this anymore. This is the verse that I looked to and when I was praying and I was seeking God's direction on what I should do. When I'm feeling stressed out and I begin questioning why I'm doing all of this, I reflect on this verse and it comes from 1 Corinthians 15, 58. It says, therefore, my dear brothers and sisters, stand firm. Remember, you're unshakable. You have the keys to the kingdom. Let nothing move you. Always give yourselves fully, 100%, with everything you got to the work of the Lord because you know that your labor in the Lord is not in vain. This verse allows me to remember that, that once again, with him we, we are unmovable. We are unshakable. And this work that we're doing is not in vain. The, this Christian walk that you're on and the work you are putting in to, the, to be the best that you can in your Christian walk, it's not in vain. Your labor in Him, the, 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 the nights to where you've sat there and you've cried and you've, you've prayed and you've read and you've, you've went through all these struggles and you've worked so hard to achieve sobriety or whatever you're going through in your life, this is, it's not in vain. That's your labor in Him. This, this week for the challenge, as we close up today, I always put out a challenge to you in, in these, this series that we've been doing. Even in the pain, the, the challenges that you may be facing today, we're going to encourage you to, to praise Him. To lift Him up and shift your focus from the stuff that you've got on to the, uh, you've got going on in your life to the things that God has done for you. 
This week we want you to go out on your social media feeds and, and just praise the Lord for something that He has given you. Every day this week, Monday, well you can start on Sunday if you want to if you're listening on Saturday night I guess. But every day this week we want you to find one thing. Just one thing that you can praise the Lord for and fix your eyes on that one thing for that day to get you through. Fix your eyes and fix your thoughts on that one thing that God has given you and you're thankful for and praise him for it that day to get you through that day. We want you to go ahead on your social media posts and tag us. You could just put the at symbol and one church Vienna, all one word. We, we want to praise with you. We want to praise Jesus with you. We want to find this to be an uplifting time again um, for the community at large. Listen, we all know that social media, sometimes we put some stuff on there, um, all the troubles that we're going through or, or what has happened in the, in the last week or maybe the month. And then when people see that you're going to praise Jesus, even in the storms and the trials that you're going through, that has a profound impact on this entire world, this whole entire area, this whole entire world. So we, we want you to encourage them. We want you to show them that, that you're going to praise him even in the storm and that you're going to walk through this thing with confidence with your head held high and have a God confidence that you can walk in. Let's pray today before we, before we leave. Lord, I thank you. I thank you for your message. Lord, if it spoke to no one else, it spoke to me this week. Lord, help us that we can, we can walk in your confidence, that, that we can continue on this path that you've set forth for us um, and not get distracted, not, not, not go left or right, but we can stay on this path and continue to do the work that you've called us to do. Lord, help us to fix our focus. Lord, help us to take our, our focus off of ourselves and off of the distractions that's got us going left and right and put them back on you. Lord, we love you today. We, we thank you. Lord, we just asking that you continue to bless our church. Help us to get the doors open as soon as possible. It's in your name that we pray all these things. And amen. As always, thank you guys for joining us today and worshiping with us. We love you and we can't wait to worship with you again in person. Stay tuned to Facebook, Insta, Twitter, and everything for an opening date coming soon. See you guys. Love you.